So the new Dungeons & Dragons starter set, Dragons of Stormwreck Isle, uh, is, is available in the United States now. And I just got my copy yesterday. I recorded a complete unboxing yesterday. And I recorded a flip through of the entire adventure and a flip through of the rule book. So I thought today I would uh, just read the entire adventure. So th it goes without saying that this is going to completely spoil the entire story. So if you're planning on participating in this game as a player, please turn off this video. But uh, if you don't think you're ever going to play this game, and you're just kind of curious what the story is, then you might enjoy this. And if you are in a part of the world where you can't get this yet, and you're interested in this game, and you're looking forward to running this for your players, then this will give you a sneak peek at uh, what you can expect to receive once this becomes widely available. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this. So cover page, Dungeons and Dragons, ages 12 and up, Dragons of Stormwreck Isle, running the adventure. Okay, running the adventure. This booklet is for the Dungeon Master. It contains a complete Dungeons and Dragons adventure as well as descriptions for the magic items and creatures in the adventure. It also teaches you how to run a D&D game. The rulebook that accompanies this booklet contains the rules for handling the situations that arise during the adventure. Overview. A D&D adventure is a collection of locations, quests, and challenges that inspire you to tell a story. The outcome of that story is determined by the actions and decisions of the adventurers and the luck of the dice. Dragons of Stormwreck Isle draws the characters into the midst of an ancient war among dragons as they explore an island that has long been a battlefield in that conflict. Here is an overview of what you'll find in this booklet. Running the Adventure. The booklet starts with an overview of the adventure. Then it takes a look at the role of the dungeon master in a game of D&D and some tips to help you in this role. Adventure Sites. The four chapters of the adventure describe locations on Stormwreck Isle where characters can explore, interact with various creatures, and pursue their goals. The first site, Dragon's Rest, serves as the character's home base during the adventure where they can rest and get supplies between their visits to other sites. Magic items and monsters. Two appendices describe rules for magic items and monsters that characters might find in the course of the adventure. Getting started. To get started, have each player choose one character to play. Five characters printed on separate sheets are included in the box. Tell the players to read over the chapter. Tell the players to read over the character sheets. Give their characters names and invent the details of their character's personality and appearance. Encourage the players to write on the character sheets to make these characters their own. And as I said in the flip through, I recommend actually making a photocopy of the character sheets and writing on the photocopies and keeping the original character sheets untouched. And if they make the character sheets available for download as PDF, then just download them and print them. But I don't recommend writing on the originals. The Forgotten Realms. The Forgotten Realms is a world of high fantasy populated by elves, dwarves, halfslings, humans, and other folk. One of many such worlds in the vast multiverse of the Dungeons and Dragons game. In the realms, fighters dare the crypts of the fallen dwarf kings of Delzone, seeking glory and treasure. Rogues prowl the dark alleyways in teeming cities such as Neverwinter and Baldur's Gate. Clerics in the service of gods wield mace and spell, defending against the terrifying powers that threaten the land. Wizards plunder the ruins of the fallen. Wizards plunder the ruins of the fallen Netheries Empire, delving into secrets too sinister for the light of day. I am not a professional YouTuber, nor am I a professional voice actor, so I will mess up some of my reading here. I apologize for that. The roads and rivers of the realm carry minstrels and peddlers, merchants and guards, soldiers and sailors. Bold adventurers follow tales of strange, glorious, faraway places. Good maps and clear trails can take even an inexperienced youth 
with dreams of glory far across the world, but these paths are never safe. Travelers in the realms face fell magic and deadly monsters. Even farms and freeholds a day's walk from a city can fall prey to monsters, and no place is safe from the wrath of a dragon. This adventure takes place on Stormwreck Isle, a small island in a region called the Sword Coast. This region is a place of adventure where daring souls delve into ancient strongholds and explore the ruins of long-lost kingdoms. Amid lawless Amid a lawless wilderness of jagged, snow-capped peaks, alpine forests, bitter winds, and roaming monsters, the coast holds renowned bastions of civilizations such as the city of Neverwinter in the shadow of the fuming volcano known as Mount Hotnow. Number of players. You can run Dragons of Stormwreck Isle for one to five players. If you have four or five friends ready to play with, each person can take one of the characters provided in the box. Five players will find encounters a little easier than four players will, but the adventure works fine as written for groups of four or five players. If you have fewer than four players, you can have some players take on the role of two characters so the group has at least four characters. A player with two characters should treat one of them as their main character and the other as a sidekick. There are two help out, but probably not engaging in a lot of dialogue. And as I said in my flip through, I find the idea of new players running multiple uh, characters, like three or four, is, is a bit un- impractical. But I suppose if, they, if you do like they say here and you treat one character as your main character and then the others are just along for the ride, then I guess it's not too impractical. Adventure background. According to legend, two families of dragons came into being in the very first days of the world's creation. Bahamut, the noble platinum dragon, made the metallic dragons gold, silver, bronze, brass, and copper. Cruel five-headed Tiamat made the chromatic dragons red, blue, green, black, and white. The metallic and chromatic dragons share a mutual animosity that originates in the enmity between Bahama and Tiamat. The origin of Dragon's Rest is rooted in that animosity. Ages ago, a fire-breathing red dragon called Sharuth rampaged up and down the Sword Coast. Three metallic dragons joined forces to battle Sharuth and imprisoned her beneath the ocean floor believing seawater would quench her fire and keep her bound forever. But Sharuth's fury, legend says, caused the undersea volcano activity that formed Stormwreck Isle. In all likelihood, Sharuth is long dead and entombed beneath the island, but chromatic dragons whisper that she still lives and will one day emerge from her prison. One fact is undeniable. The powerful magic embodied in such an ancient dragon has left a permanent mark on Stormwreck Isle. That magic has drawn other dragons to the island throughout the centuries, making it a recurring battlefield in the conflict between chromatic and metallic dragons. Several of these dragons have died several of these dragons have died there, each leaving behind a spiritual scar that causes unpredictable magical effects. A hundred years ago, a blue dragon tried to harness this destructive magic. A bronze dragon named Runara pleaded with him to abandon his schemes. When he refused, Runara killed him, adding one more dragon grave to the island. Runara has grown weary of strife, and Stormwreck Isle and Stormwreck Isle's wounds are a constant reminder to her of the cost of such conflict. Devoting herself to peace and reconciliation, she established the Cloister of Dragon's Rest as a safe haven from violence. Living in human guise, Renara now serves as the leader of a tiny group of hermits and, and ascetics. But the ageless conflict between chromatic and metallic dragons threatens to disrupt the serenity of Dragon's Rest. And this is where the adventure begins. Adventure Outline In Dragons of Stormwreck Isle, the characters experience the magical scars left behind by the death of the dragons. 
faced with the evil schemes of one living dragon and the righteous anger of another, they'll have the chance to explore whether peace between the feeding dragon families is possible, or if they must resort to violence to resolve the conflict on this isle. The adventure has four chapters. Chapter 1, Dragon's Rest, introduces Renara's cloister and its inhabitants, and provides the characters the opportunity to learn about the problems facing the island. It also describes additional encounters you can use in the course of the adventure, including a magical hot spring with mysterious guardians at the site of a brass dragon's death. Chapter 2, Seagrow Caves, describes how the grave of Sharuth spawns magical connections to the elemental plane of fire that threatens a community of mushroom-like myconids. Chapter 3, Cursed Shipwreck, details a ship that crashed alongside the bones of a golden dragon and the horrible curse within the ship's hold. Chapter 4, Cliff Top Observatory, brings the characters to the site where Runara killed a blue dragon and where that blue dragon's grandson has made his lair. There they'll also find a bronze wormling who rejected Renara's teachings of peace, now held prisoner in the Blue Dragon's Lair. Adventure Maps The maps in this booklet are for the DM's eyes only. These maps show secret doors and other elements that players aren't meant to see. When the characters arrive at a location marked on a map, describe it to give them a clear mental picture of the location. You can also draw what they see on paper, copying what's on your map while omitting secret details. It's not important that your hand-drawn map perfectly match what's on the printed adventure. Try to get the basic shape and dimensions correct and leave the rest to the player's imaginations. The Dungeon Master The Dungeon Master has a special role in D&D games. The D&D is a storyteller. The DM presents the challenges and encounters that the characters must overcome. The DM is the player's interface to the D&D world, who reads and sometimes also writes the adventure and describes what happens in response to the character's react in response to the character's actions. The DM is a referee. When it's not clear what ought to happen next, the DM describes how to apply the rules and keeps the story going. The DM is a role player. The DM plays the monsters in the adventure, choosing their actions and rolling the dice for their attacks. The DM also plays all the other people the characters meet, including helpful ones. DM tips. The most important part of being a good DM is facilitating the fun of everyone at the table. Keep these tips in mind to help things go smoothly. Embrace the shared story. D&D is about telling a story as a group, so let the players contribute to the outcome through the words and deeds of their characters. If some players are reluctant to speak up, ask them what their characters are doing. It's not a competition. The DM isn't competing against the players. Your job is to referee the rules, run monsters, and keep the story moving. Be fair and flexible. Treat your players in a fair, impartial manner. The rules help you do this, but you can make your own rulings to ensure everyone is having fun. Modify the adventure to suit your tastes. The adventure has no prescribed... Uh, let me start over. The adventure has no prescribed outcome. You can alter any encounter to make it more interesting and fun for your players. Keep a notepad handy. Use it to track details such as the characters and monsters initiative order. Sharing information. As Dungeon Master, one of your most important tasks is figuring out how much to tell the players and when. All the information the players need to make choices comes from you. Within the rules of the game and the limits of the character's knowledge and senses, tell players everything they need to know. Text appears in a box like this. It, uh, let me restart over. Text that appears in a box like this is meant to be read aloud or paraphrased to the players 
when their characters first arrive at a location or under a specific circumstance as described in the text. It usually describes locations or presents scripted dialogue so the players know what's up and have a sense of what their character's options are. You don't have to reveal every aspect of a situation or hazard in one go. Boxed text typically describes everything the characters see, hear, or smell at first glance. As characters search rooms, make wisdom or intelligence checks, uh, or perception or investigation, respectively, open drawers and chests, and generally examine things more closely, give players more detail about what their characters find. Creature stat blocks. Whenever the adventure text presents a creature's name in bold type, that's a visual cue directing you to the creature's stat block in Appendix B. Those stat blocks are intended for your eyes only. However, as the characters fight monsters, you can reveal certain information to help them make smart choices in combat. Hit points. You can give players a sense of how well they're doing against a creature by describing it in narrative terms, how hurt the creature is. For example, if the creature has fewer than half being badly wounded, let me restart that. For example, if the creature has fewer than half its hit points remaining, you can describe it as being badly wounded. Such information gives the players a sense of progress and might spur them to press the attack. On the other hand, if the characters aren't damaging the creature much, let the players know that the creature looks like it can take a lot more punishment. That might encourage the players to change their plan. Abilities, Strengths, and Weaknesses As they fight a creature, characters should learn more about the creature's abilities. Share information with the players as it becomes apparent. For example, if the wizard casts Flaming Spear, a spell that deals fire damage, against a fire snake, a creature that's immune to fire damage, let the wizard's player know the spell doesn't seem to bother the creature at all. Players might correctly guess that a fire snake probably isn't harmed by fire. Feel free to subtly confirm their guesses, perhaps smiling and saying, that sounds reasonable. Story information. A location description might include important information not in boxed text. Often you're meant to reveal such information when the characters examine particular areas or interact with creatures. And here's the map of the area they'll be in. Dragon's Rest is being the primary place that they'll spend uh, their time when they're in between quests. As the DM, you roleplay the creatures that the characters encounter. The adventure offers guidance to help you decide what these creatures know and how willing they are to share information with the characters. Beyond that, improvise and bring these characters to life as best you can. For example, the adventure describes For example, the adventure describes Runara, the disguised bronze dragon who leads the cloister of Dragon's Rest, as wise and peace-loving, but you get to decide what her voice sounds like and how she reacts to a given situation. You can also ignore what the text says and roleplay Renara or any other creature as you see fit. Treasure When characters find treasure, tell them how many coins they find and how many... Let me start over. When characters find treasure, tell them how many coins they find and how much any gems and art objects are worth. Sometimes treasure includes magic items whose names are presented in italic type. Appendix A describes these items and their properties, as well as the rules for how characters figure out what a magic item does. Making Mistakes Dungeon Masters are fallible, just like everyone else, and even experienced DMs make mistakes. If you overlook, forget, or misrepresent something, correct yourself and move on. I would even say if you overlook, forget, or misrepresent something, you may just roll with it. Instead of correcting yourself, you might just want to say, well, 
that's just how it's going to be now. <laughs> no one expects you to memorize every part of this adventure and all the rules in the rulebook. As long as your players are having fun, everything will be just fine. Improvising ability checks. The adventure often tells you what ability checks characters might try in certain situations and the difficulty class of those checks. But sometimes characters try things that the adventure can't anticipate. In that case, you decide how to handle it. Ability checks are for situations where characters' success or failure isn't guaranteed. If anyone can easily accomplish a task, don't ask for an ability check. Just tell the player what happens. And if there's no way anyone could accomplish the task, just tell the player it doesn't work. When you decide an ability check is required, consult the ability check section of the rulebook and the table of typical difficulty classes most of the time. Choose a DC that is easy, which is a DC of 10, moderate, which is a DC of 15, or hard, which is a DC of 20. Okay, and that is it for uh, getting to know the adventure, and next we'll move on to Chapter 1, Dragon's Rest.